three, two, one, and we're live. And welcome back to Lionscapes, everybody. How are you? How is your day? We hope that um, you have started your day well or you're ending it well. In any case, you're starting it or ending it well because you're going to do some landscape um, vegetation drawing in color today. So you know that like landscapes and vegetation is one of our topics, one of our favorite ones. Mine mm -hmm. is like really, I really like to draw trees, but color is a layer of um, challenge that um, we need to talk about because I think it's quite challenging also for me. Mm -hmm. And I want to share with you what I've recently learned about that. Amazing. For everyone who's here for the first time, uh, I'm welcoming you. Hi, my name is Sonia and this is Gasper. Welcome all on our Linescapes channel. We do tutorials and lots of videos on topics, topic of creativity and drawing. Exactly. And we help you, first of all, draw better. So to learn the tool of drawing and then um, Second of all, we help you use drawing to spark your creativity with different drawing exercises. We help you with creativity in other fields, overcoming the artist's block, finding inspiration and training your imagination. Yes, amazing. So, um, I would like for you to prepare the materials for today. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Gasper, what are you going to be using for this exercise? Yeah, you can gladly show them. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> this is a small result, a test I did for you. This is a, you know, a small preview uh, <laughs> of what we'll be doing today. But we will be using basically any material, um, any artist material, any stationery that has color. So I will be using today markers. Mm -hmm. There you go, these are alcohol markers. Um, and you're using Arteza or...? Yeah, I'm using a mm -hmm. brand called Arteza. Okay. And you can either, if you have any markers lying around, if you're, any, if you're in a design, um, I would say, design field, then you might have any lying around. If you're not, it's quite rare probably that you have stuff like that at home. But completely fine is any other paint also. So watercolor will be okay. Um, you know, gouache will be okay. Acrylic paint will be okay. Even colored pencils are completely fine, in watercolor pencils. So the um, emphasis today is not going to be how to use the markers, although I will be using them and you can ask questions also to the mm -hmm. technique, but um, actually to the use and combination of color um, when doing landscape images. And this will help you basically not just if you're interested in landscape in itself, in the sense of, okay, I want to do some landscape painting, some sketching, anything, but also if you're using landscapes, you know, in one of your illustrations, designs, as a backdrop to your character that you're designing or anything. So um, I think this is like a very basic knowledge that will apply to a wide array um, of different disciplines and um, different uses of, let's say, landscape scenery. Um, yeah, and we'll be focusing on, of course, how to draw the vegetation landscape. Okay. Uh, that sounds amazing. So for this time, I would just like to uh, give you time to prepare the materials and also say that you can support us by giving us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and uh, join our groups. So you can join us on in, uh, Facebook. Our group is called Linescapers or via uh, Instagram. All right. Yeah. So, um, I would just suggest that we start. Yeah, let's do it. So let us let us get like three I'm ready from the chat so we know that people are uh, people are so far. Yeah. And um, apart from that, also interesting, what I'm always interested in is like, where are you tuning in from? Mm -hmm. And is someone here for the first time or have you been coming back? I always ask this question because it's nice to see if, you know, if new people are here to maybe elaborate a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great to see faces that are showing up again and again. Um, and also, we have this live chat. You can always uh, ask questions there. And if you're watching this on replay or even if you're live, you can gladly leave us a comment in the comment section, a question or whatever, and we'll do our best to answer it. Yeah. 
Wow, I mean, I'm so excited for today. We already have some comments here. All right. Um, everyone's ready. Uh, and before we start, let's give a shout out to uh, Michelle, who gave us a super chat, a small donation. Thank you very much for your support. That means a lot to us. Thank you, Michelle. I really, really appreciate it. And for everyone who doesn't know, um, Super Chat is a form of support that you can also give us. That's a small donation button. In a, it's a symbol of dollar. Um, and it's also one way how you can support us. Or you can give us a thumbs up. That's fine as well. And share it with your friends. You can send us a kiss. We also take kisses. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so everyone's ready, tuning in from different parts of the world. One, the N is tuning in from Mayland, USA, uh, Maryland, sorry, USA. Um, some are from Slovenia. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Tina is here from Ljubljana. Nice uh, to see you again, Tina. Ljubljana is a beautiful city, it's I my, heard. It's my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's start. All right, let's go. So today, um, maybe we can look at a bit the points that we will go through. So we will show, I will sh take you through six different points mm -hmm. um, and we will draw three images, um, three different landscape images and try to learn them. Um, so maybe you could show them what are the points for today. Okay, so what you're gonna, uh, the points for today are these. All right, so we'll start with think volumes and surfaces. We'll go to color, harmony, We'll go to depth, we'll go to light, and then end also with composition. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. um, yeah, I'll blend, we'll blend in this for you now and again so we can see where we are. Okay. Um, so, let's start with the first image that we will be drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna blend in the screen. Yes, do that. And everyone, you can gladly, um, you can gladly take a snapshot if you want to we will have it blended in on the side as well but yeah let's look at what we have okay so the first one is this one wow all right so how do you like it well it's very very colorful um and okay since our topic is vegetation today uh it's not it's very far away it's not so detailed i would say mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one of the ideas uh, why I chose this first one is because we need to understand, before we really start and dive into color, and it will also apply to color, we need to understand um, how landscape is built. Mm -hmm. And the best way to think about a landscape is to, to think about in term of surfaces and volumes. Uh -huh. Okay. So we'll dive right into it. Take a you know screenshot if you want to have this bigger. Um, and else we'll just start drawing together and we'll learn the first principle think volumes and surfaces okay so uh, okay I'm, I'm sorry I'm gonna correct this immediately I'm gonna just move this to the side so that you can see also the so I will be um, I will you know in all together we'll draw um, three images so if you have three pages you can reserve three sketchbook pages for that or you can um, also gladly maybe have a big paper I have a big A3 today I'm using uh, like a marker bleed proof paper um, but you can use whatever you want okay mm -hmm. so let's start looking at this um, basically the landscape, what I meant, is composed always of surfaces and um, volumes. That means that some elements are going to be surfaces and some are going to be volumes. And you probably can guess that trees and shrubs and vegetation, basically, are the volumes in the landscape. And then fields and grasslands and everything else is um, the surfaces. So let's, let's first draw this really simply, really you know, really exaggerate it simply, just to understand, just outline what we see to understand this volumes and surfaces. So basically, I will start with the first surface that's really near to us. So this is this, this first hill, right? So this is this first pasture, grassland, something. Mm 
-hmm. and it's just like a surface, right? I'll, this is all I will draw now. So then let's look at, you know, then we immediately have afterwards, I will kind of move from front <laughs> to back. We already have like a hedge. And um, I will just draw it really simplified, um, you know, just like a small cloud resting on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so this is already a volume, right? And then let's go, let's go on. So, okay, we have this small house here. This is not so essential for us, but I will still, still, I will just outline it, I outline it real quick. So, you know, so we did it, but it's enough. You know, then we move to the next layer back. Then we see here right of the house are like three trees. I'll just do the outlines first. You see, we can basically see the um, how they touch the ground. There are just three, like, volume bumps. Mm -hmm. And then we can, if we are going even further back, after, behind the house there are some more trees, some smaller ones, some shrubs. And then there is another pasture. Look at that, like that. My God, your voice is so, so nice just to listen to. I mean... Uh, you could be the next Bob Ross. <laughs> I'll work on my Bob Ross talking skills. So let's draw some trees, people. Let's draw some trees. If you draw a tree wrongly, don't worry. There are no mistakes. Just happy little accidents. Happy little <laughs> clouds. <laughs> It'll be totally funny if I talk like that all the time. Yeah. But uh, when, when I went to uh, secondary school... Yeah. Or the, the art school, there was like uh, an older art teacher and his voice was just like someone would would tell us some, you know, bedtime stories oh, all nice. the time. Yeah, his, his voice was really rough, uh, probably from smoking. <laughs> and um, but 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 still it was so when he was just you wanted that he gi gives you the corrections. Uh, because it was just so so pleasant to hear his voice. This is really nice. It really helps, um, you know, if someone has a nice voice, then usually I fell asleep faster, you know, if a professor <laughs> had a, <laughs> a nice voice, a teacher. Yeah, but but I, I completely understand. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing now, as you can see, this is really, I'm not adding any textures at this point, because we're only trying to observe the volumes and the surfaces. Mm -hmm. And you see, all, basically, all the bubbly forms are the volumes. These are the trees, right? Um, or some hedges or anything. And the surfaces are basically these um, these fields in between. Mm -hmm. And there's also a line there, I think. Okay, I would like to ask at this point, are you all drawing? Or is someone just watching? I saw that Eleonora is just watching what's, what's going on and the whole process, but all the rest, what's your situation? Are you following the, the tutorial or the, the drawing process and Kasper, or are you just more observer type today? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so Maria is, is also drawing, Tina is also drawing, probably. All right, nice. So um, <clears throat> now I will. So now we know a, a bit about um, a bit about volumes and surfaces, right? Is there any question at this point? So basically, the surfaces are the lines, and the volumes are the trees and shrubs. And if you will think about them in that way, it will be much easier now in further steps to color them in, to understand them as volumes, and also to shade them in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I always think about the, the surfaces and the volumes, like the surfaces is everything what's on the ground. It's mm -hmm. like yeah. a carpet. Yeah, exactly. And then the volumes is everything what's vertical. So mm -hmm. um, I always, when I draw, I always try to draw a surface and then something that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on that surface. And then another surface in the background and then what's on that surface again. Yeah, so Im really imagine like these trees sitting sitting on that on that basically flat surface. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good way yeah. to, to think about it. Okay, so yeah, we have many comments. Uh, Samantha said, I'm watching. I will try the tutorial another day. Tina is also drawing along. Kim as well. Wildheart, uh, I'm taking notes to use when 
I'm watching again later. Carlos is always working, but watching with one eye. This is nice, Carlos. I'm really glad that you're, you know, you're working, but you're you're still with us, anyways. This is really this is really cool. Yeah. Okay. So Thomas is also saying, observing for now. Thank you. Anne is drawing, trying to keep up. Um, is house a volume? Yes. Yes. Um, we, you know, we're not going to focus on buildings, but by the way, yeah, buildings in the landscape are also volumes, so also consider them as volumes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, everyone's following along, so I think we can move to the next step. Yeah, so point two, this is the first step, volumes and surfaces. That's why we also pre-drew this, outlined today, to better explain it. Now we come to the point color, mm -hmm. right? So now let me take... A moment to explain something about color. Mm -hmm. This is relevant, this volumes and surfaces to the color, this way we did it. So, ta-da! You know, you know, we I I always bring out this color wheel that we did in one of our previous um, previous live videos, but it's really true <laughs> that I really learned to trust the color wheel, right? In color wheel we trust. Yeah. It yeah. should be ours. That's true. <laughs> and so, anyways. Um, interesting thing about landscapes is that the colors in a landscape are usually very um, reserved, right? And they are the colors that we will use or that we generally have to use in a landscape are um, usually adjacent to each other on the color wheel. Mm -hmm. So let me explain really quick a color wheel before you know if some, someone doesn't know it. So we have a color wheel displays the um, natural array of colors in the way they are mixed with each other and there are cool colors on one side, warm on the other and it shows us which colors we get if we mix you know the neighboring ones mm -hmm. and we go into in depth in this other video about this but we're going to use it today because the color wheel also helps you find the right color harmonies right you always can if you combine two colors that are opposed to each other they look nice um, you know if you combine like three that are like in a triangle, um, it's nice. But also, if you combine colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, um, you know, adjacent to each other, you get the so-called anal analogous color, color harmony. Analogous color harmony. Yes. yes. And this is how landscape usually look, landscapes. Mm -hmm. You have either like some dark blue greenish and maybe some yellow or you have like yellowish and some orange or you have like a autumn or maybe a desert landscape so when you do landscapes unless you're doing like a fantastic landscape like background for you know um, some fantasy scene um, or sci-fi environment on another planet one should always consider going for adjacent colors mm -hmm. so in this one we'll go for the greens light greens dark greens and some yellow Okay. Yeah. So that means that if you're using watercolors, you are playing with the amount of yellow versus green, maybe adding some, if you want to deepen the tones, adding a bit more blue or black or something similar or brown even. And if you're using markers, markers is a special, it's special technique, which is totally different as well. Uh, let us know if you would like us to do a tutorial or maybe a video um, on how to use alcoholic markers. That's something that's very interesting as well. Um, yeah, and if you're using um, colored pencils, there's is same as here with alcoholic pencil uh, markers. Uh, the similarity is that you're working in layers. Yeah. Okay, so you basically first now added yellow, which is not something that I would think about. Yeah, this is also, yellow. before you dive in, it's also something maybe you should all do. This is, I, I want to say this before. Um, start with a yellow field. Make it yellow. I will make everything yellow because the markers allow me that and I can go with green over it later. So this is not the point. Um, yeah. I'm not making yellow everything yellow to... Um, to blend the colors better, but because I want to show you still one good um, example, one important point about volumes and surfaces and color. So, I just painted in all the surfaces yellow. I will later make some green, obviously. But, remember one thing, 
the surfaces always look lighter, brighter than the volumes. It's a simple reason for that. The volumes, because they are voluminous, they always cast a shadow. Mm. Not even not just cast a shadow, they have a shade. Mm-hmm. Right? They have a bright side and a shady mm-hmm. side. Mm-hmm. And that's why the volumes will always look darker. Also, like the fo- foliage of the trees is much um, the texture of, is, is much more crude. It's not so fine as the grass blades. And then when light falls on it, there are much many more shades and shadows emerging. Right. So the tree looks more dark yeah. than yeah. a grassland. So remember mm-hmm. that. Always the volumes look darker than the surfaces. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So everyone, let's color in the surfaces. Um, you know, you see the red one, we see a bright green one here, and then some green ones in the back. I will now just go with green over the over the yellow one, so we get it out, that yellow one out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when using alcoholic markers, you are um, are you also are you going to deepen the color or are are you is that your final color or do you have even deeper tone of green that you would like to yes i use will later on i will add some texture in even deeper green mm-hmm. so right now um basically you see also the interesting thing about um about this is that there are different shades of um of green, you know, the first one is a bit darker. Then the second one here that I'm drawing now, um, I'm painting in now, is a bit lighter. And what also helps me, I divided these with these lines in these different layers. So mm-hmm. this helps me um, also decide which ones should be darker and which ones should be lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will deepen the first one, the one closest to me, also with the darker green. Mm-hmm. So let's let's do that right now. Um, also interesting is actually you know what the trees right let's do them let's do them yellow here as well because basically you will see uh, I mean depends on your medium I will do it yellow right now but um, there's some yellow shining through so from the back because they have some holes in them and stuff so I can kind of afford to do this now um, because markers allow me to go with green over it. If you're doing it watercolor, don't color them in yellow because you'll have to wait forever for them to try. Okay, so let's make the first field a bit darker. Um, so I'll take a bit of a darker green and I will already add some texture. So this is already one small tip, you know, that I can also give you on your way. When coloring in vegetation, use the stroke of your pen, pencil, brush, or whatever to already um, create the textures, right? Because the way I paint this in, or color this in, already um, already helps create uh, a feeling of a grassland. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So, basically, with every stroke that you do, we did uh, a tutorial or a live stream where we used colored pencils and then there we also emphasized how how uh, blending and hatching is important and there you can use different kind of hatches like cross hatched with just lines or or even like spiral version yeah. um, and here as well I noticed that you do the same yeah. as you also already yeah. said so you're trying to establish texture at the same time but still keeping it like neat like everything's just like yeah everything's like neat um and I will, I will just add texture here in front to um you know because on the back you cannot really recognize much texture it's just like a surface mm-hmm. m- m- you know monotonous mm-hmm. or monochrome okay. homogeneous surface wow so that's one way how can you yeah. differentiate between yeah between different different fields yeah awesome Okay, I, can I give you a small break? Yes, please. Okay, so um, first I would like to do a shout out to Marie. Thank you very much for your support. This Thank heart you. is for you. It is totally for you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I would like to, to read you a few comments. Please so do. there are many viewers that would like to see a additional a video on how to use alcoholic markers. All right. Um, and then also, Semiha said, "You guys are 
going to a special corner in my heart's summer resort. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> Whatever you are streaming, I'm exactly looking for the same content. Loves. So Micha, this is amazing. We always get these amazing feedbacks from you and comments on our videos. So yeah, yeah. thanks for always writing us. Yeah. And also Olga said, thank you, great. The way of explanation is simple and right. Only what's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Wow, Gasper, you're doing a good job. Okay. Uh, yeah, and Maria said, I'm using watercolors and it's going slower. Obviously, no problem, mm -hmm. Maria. I know. I also, a reason I used, you know, markers is because I want to get to those three different examples you go at your pace, just have us running in the background and then you can, you know, finish it, the stuff later. Mm -hmm. I just want to pack now this knowledge into these three um, three images as fast yeah. as possible. But the process would be the same. You would also start with yellow as Gashper first did and then you would take a green color, apply the green color on all the surfaces that Gashper also applied it on. And then as third layer, when everything is dry, you would go with deeper tone of green and then as the foreground mm. uh, surface. Okay, so what's the next step, Kasper? So next step is we've got the surfaces colored in. Now let's go for the volumes, right? Mm -hmm. So for the surfaces, I used like a base green, a base yellow <laughs> to make them a little bit lighter. Now I will use a green tone for all the sur for all the volumes. Mm -hmm. But the, I will layer darker green on them as well. Let me just find a path, you know, fitting green. <laughs> this is almost the same as the yellow. Yeah. Well, sometimes the tones are so yeah. similar. This is the, Jason, this is about, you know, this is the, this is the thing about landscape drawing and sketching and stuff. You have this adjacent um, color scheme and many things look really similar in color, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But the value of the color, this means how dark it is, is the thing that is going to make a difference. So I'm. this is a base light green. Now, if you're watch, doing this with colored pencils or markers or you know something that dries quickly, you can gladly apply a base color to the whole of the tree. If not, you will just apply it to the top, to the top of the trees and then the bottoms we will shade in. So now, let, uh, let's, let me show you right away what I mean. I'm taking the darker green mm -hmm. and I'm making the bottom of the shrubs, look at that, I'm making it darker. Mm -hmm. And I'm leaving some of the bright spots because this is there's always some spots on the on on the shrub or on the tree with whatever type of plant you have that that is um, illuminated by the sun. Mm -hmm. So it's lighter? Because it's three-dimensional, yeah. right? Because three there's always like a branch or just a part that yeah. is just sticking out out of that vol volume. And think about it, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, think about it as a volume. It is mm -hmm. a volume, you know. I will not be so exact now about drawing these trees. I won't stress about every branch because I just want to get the principle across. Of course, the tree is a bit different, but all in all, I think we will recognize the landscape if again if, I, if we've seen it. Mm -hmm. So look at that. Now I'm adding this darker green to the trees. And let's go, let's make, you know, work our way into the back with the darker green. Well, this looks uh, very good already. And I think it's also a very good choice of medium that you chose for today's uh, workshop or video live stream. Because um, when learning something new, it's usually a bit better to choose like a, a very robust tool, something that that's making that allows you making mistakes from the beginning on. So if you would take something very precise like a pencil, that would you would be inclined to, to just draw in the details, right? Yeah, pencil is less forgiving, right? Yeah, than, uh, and than also a like a fine liner or a pen, like a very, very thin pen. Um, and this kind of um, marker just allows you to be like uh, very brave, you know, you just need to use it. It is a, Ross, a certain amount of bravery. I mean, I'm still, not, I'm, let's, you know, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't know the marker drawing techniques, right? I mean, I know the color and I know how to use it in the sense of 
I will, I think I will use the right color in the right moment in the right place. Mm -hmm. But there are like techniques and how you can layer them mm -hmm. and make them really cool. And that's why I like product and blending, and blending, blending yeah. like color, uh, product designers are yeah. like amazing. They do yeah. this amazing card drawings. They render they it. They render it. Yeah. And like, wow. wow, how did you do that? It looks real, basically. And yeah. I'm not there yet. But if you guys are interested in tutorials, you know, I'll just learn it for you. <laughs> like we did a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, some are using, I'm not sure, is anyone using alcohol markers as well, or are you just alone doing it? But we have Maybe. here uh, Radka and Anne using color pencils, uh, and Pam and Lina are using watercolors. So, yeah, you, you have a mixed crowd here. Yeah, and this is completely fine, because what I want to um, uh, exactly bring across today is that... Um, that the use of color in the, the let's say layering of color and um, composition of color more than um, actual technique and mm -hmm. this is so you're completely free to use whatever you want yeah so don't stress as Gaspar said it's more about the learning process as for the technique so it's not a tutorial on how to use markers it's more about how do you create the volumes and surfaces and then trying yeah. to emphasize them adding the right color from the right side so that you create like volumes and just the feeling of vegetation right okay so now comes an important part i just added some tree trunks you know this is always nice mm -hmm. but now comes an important part where i add the shadows and the shades okay oh right okay and now Let's be careful, because um, I would suggest you don't go for complete black. You know, I have here one called Noir, noir. and I will not go for Noir, because it's a bit too intense. I will go for Dark Chocolate Brown. Mm -hmm. Of course, that sounds also much more tasty, but it's not so dark, <laughs> and um, it will. I can always go, I can always go uh, darker if I want to, than with the Noir. Ah, so awesome. Well, you know, you're not alone using alcoholic markers. All right. Sweet Poison is also using them. Um, right, and, Sweet Poison. Okay, we have water-based markers by uh, is, are being used by someone, someone. Then Tina and Louis are using watercolors. And Tina said just mm, to the chocolate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you read the names on those uh, markers, I mean, they are very creative. It, I think it's almost the same as with makeup. Makeup, every shade and every tone always has uh, a name, even though the, the, the colors almost look identical. But, for example, this orange name is Pumpkin Orange. Uh, yellow Orange. And then we have... Beer green, okay, so, um, and yeah, you have everything, arctic blue, Oof. arctic blue, Oof. Oh, I'm gonna use that arctic blue right now, okay, so now yeah. the shading, of course, um, shading is quite cool, now, there are two things to the shading, first is the shade, so this is on the tree, on the whatever itself, mm -hmm. and the second is the shadow, now, look at this landscape, where is the light coming from? The light is coming from actually from the right side, right? So the left side of our trees, left bottom side of our trees and everything is going to be more shaded than the rest. Um, so yeah, this is what I just did. And underneath, you know, I added some shadows. So mm -hmm. on the trees are the shades and underneath are the shadows. And I needed a long time to learn the difference between those two. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Tina asks, mm. uh, are you shading volumes and surfaces too? I'm not going to shade surfaces because surfaces don't cast a uh, shadow. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they don't, they're so flat that they reflect basically most of the light. Uh, by the way, here I'm just going to add this arctic blue, but not going to add clouds because this is Sonia's domain and I do not en dare enter it. <laughs> yeah, I was also thinking about doing another, another uh, tutorial on how to do watercolor clouds. I mean, I'm so in love with clouds. That's just... Amazing what, what you can do with those. Um, yeah, probably great. And each technique is special. I mean, I also saw some amazing example, um, different artists doing um, uh, those alcohol marker clouds, but... Um, yeah, hey. Okay. Um, in 
is there a an example that you can give us when would you add some shadow to to like to, to surfaces yes um, when the surface in itself has some subdivisions and this is what I did here you know you see there is a path here there's also a path going through this field of yellow what is that like some yellow plant mm -hmm. I know the name is Slovene but I have no idea what it is in English so um, you I would like shade those shade in those areas because this is where the kind of the surface breaks there is a change and then maybe a shade actually mm -hmm. um, emerges because the sun comes from one angle mm -hmm. so this is in this case I would do it maybe maybe you know when you have a large homogeneous 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 <laughs> I would also say homogeneous when you have a large area that's a bit boring let's equal. say equal huge equal yeah uh, Monotonous. Monotonous, yeah. Monotonous is good. Monotonic. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> words now. <laughs> when you have a big area like that, I will look for irregularities in that area, mm. in that grass. So, I so you're say, trying to break it a bit. Yeah, there are some, you know, areas that are a bit darker. Here's also something, and this is where I will add a bit of, like, you know, darker tone. Mm -hmm. And what you're using is just uh, a normal alcoholic blender just to try yeah. to blend so this is a markers together this is a purely marker thing like you don't have yeah. to do it if yeah. you have your what colored pencils or watercolors you it's like you need. adding water yeah you it's know? This, the analogous to that in yeah. watercolors okay the last thing I just want to add is a bit of gray on that house to mm -hmm. not make it so uh, lonely and white but yeah but uh, what I what I also like a lot is that white line here that you left, you know, mm -hmm. just not to to fill all the surface with with the yeah. same blue tone. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So, what we learned with this one is, let's recap a bit. I like to recap stuff. We learned. Should I blend in the? Yes, you can blend in the, and then we'll see where we go next. The font? Yes. So, think volumes and surfaces and, and color harmony. These are the two things we basically learned in this one. Mm -hmm. And I also showed you how to, um, you know, because of we think volumes and surfaces, how to do this shading and shadows on the, on the trees. But we'll go even deeper into that topic in um, our point light. Mm -hmm. So now let's um, slowly move to the next one. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not done yet, um, don't stress. Like I said, you can always come back and do it. Samantha said, whoa, it looks amazing. Thank you, Samantha. It's nice to hear. Okay. So what are you writing down? Just the notes or? Yeah, just the... Just the notes for yourself. I like to... Oh, okay, so this is also the time where you can just breathe in and breathe out, you know, just stretch your muscles and your hands and everything before we move on. And also, how are you doing um, for everyone who just joined again or are here for the first time? Welcome in our tutorial. We are just moving to the next drawing that you can uh, just start following along. And for all the rest who are already joining and drawing along, then um, yeah, I would like to ask: Are you are you keeping up, or are you having trouble with your medium? Um, do your surfaces still need to dry? <laughs> What's the situation? Um, but yeah, Tina said the train is going. Yeah, that's true. The train is going, but for this exercise, the train is is going very slowly so <laughs> no rush there and yeah. can, um, don't forget to just uh, put the cap on your alcoholic markers w when you're done because they dry very fast all right okay so let's look at the second one mm -hmm. meanwhile while you um, look at the second one let's just say this, this train is leaving analogy is the thing that Sonia always uses like the, imagine the train is leaving and you just have like two more minutes to finish your work and you really have to go and this is like to put you under slight pressure and um, it's a good tactic yeah we imagine really trains leaving and it's like oh we have to go yeah oh, we experienced that as well so yeah. we know and we forgot some luggage uh, yeah. 
on the station. You did? Yeah. yeah, right. You forgot like a sleeping mat. Yeah. Somewhere in Italy. Yeah, and I can remember the the lady who was there, you know, uh, taking care of the security. He tried. She tried to help us to put everything on the train, um, and we were on the clock, so we needed to hurry. And she, then the close uh, the the doors just closed, and she was just like. Miss Cousy, ah, you forgot the sleeping bag. And I was just like, no, of course we did. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Okay, so um, this is the next one. Beautiful. So, um, yeah. I actually, I kind of um, deliberately picked, you know, some kitschy. They're almost like too, you know, kitschy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, no problem because uh, <laughs> they're meant to be a bit over the top. So I can show you the stuff that I want to show you. Mm -hmm. So for this one, we already know we think volumes and surfaces. We start with the surfaces, we continue with the volumes. Let's do this one without doing the outlines. Mm. This might be harder, but okay. let's try. Because um, this is ultimately how painting, you know, you will do some outlines with a, with a pencil or so. But if you really, you know, if the really train is leaving, um, let's do this challenge and do it without, without. And um, now we're going to talk about depth and we talk about light in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, why about depth? Because depth is really important to um, capture an image. It's really um, what makes an image kind of, kind of come to life. And light is also something we already started talking about. And here we see nice shadows. Um, and they also um, are subdividing nicely the first, um, first part of the image. So, yeah. Okay, so before we continue, I would like to remind you, uh, make a screenshot, don't forget, because I'm going to blend it uh, out now and you're going to see in a smaller version. So, just that you know. Yes. Three, two, one, let's go. Oh, and we're here. And we're here. Okay, so, depth. Let's, let's do this. So, the most simple way to understand depth and to create depth in an image is to think about layers. And I like to think about three layers in my image. So, the foreground, you know, let's do it this here, one, then we have the middle layer where something is happening, and then we have the background, you know, so why I said something is happening, because usually the main point, the main focal point of the of the image is the middle um, layer, but not necessarily, you can create tension by putting something in the background, putting something in the foreground. Um, so let's just start with the first layer and with the first surface. So, in this one, right up front, basically, we see, uh, like a meadow. Let's mm -hmm. say the first layer is all the way up to the tree in the middle, mm -hmm. right? And I will just go, without outlines, directly into it, and I will make it, you know, we know that the grass is usually um, the lightest. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it definitely is lighter than the trees, brighter than the trees, because of the reflective... Um, reflective, how do you call them, um, capabilities, not capabilities, it's more reflective than the trees. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good to tell it simply. I'm looking like for a fancy word, uh, reflective properties, right, properties. <laughs> nicely, nicely put. Okay, so yeah, so this is the first, and it's the first, I just started with a surface, and in the first mm -hmm. layer we basically just have the surface. Mm. Now, um, we already see here that there's something more going on than just this grass. So, um, we also have, you know, here that the grass is, the grass is a bit, like, cruder. Um, and then, I will not add the shadows yet, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be adding those later. But I will already add some green, because uh, we see that the grass is mostly green. There are spots where, where it is yellow, so it's kind of um, paid off for me to do it. It's a bit yellow, but you can just go in with green hmm. directly. Oh, you know what? What? I think those markers are pretty dry. And I think they I, are pretty dry, right? And I'm so surprised because, because we got them last year, and I know markers. I mean, we I still own some alcoholic markers from, from university times, yeah. from our stu student times, and they still work. So, I must say, I'm not, yeah, I'm not really so impressed by those markers, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the middle layer. So in the middle layer, 
and there is another I'm still ignoring the volumes as you notice like here would be a tree but I'm just gonna continue with the middle layer so there is also another meadow and I will make it a bit of a different shade right mm -hmm. you can see it is also a bit brighter the first one is a bit more green than the second one so let's just leave in this case I'll just leave the second one um, second one more yellow I will add some some green tones to it but not much and basically our back layer in this case are the trees in the background you mm -hmm. see on the, those on this hill there are some trees in the back and th this is the back layer and I'm gonna come to it when I'm finished with the volumes mm -hmm. okay so now I'm going to continue with the volumes and I'm also gonna work my way back from front to back now these different layers first second and the third the first layer is always the most color intensive one also the darkest mm -hmm. and with distance usually the layers and all the elements become more bright less color intensive and a bit more bluish yeah yeah so like this is yeah some sort of they also get like this blurry foggy effect yeah. right in the background yeah. not so many details yeah this can is be seen. this is because um this is a physics 101 <laughs> because light when it's you know reflecting off distant objects it has to travel back to us through a lot of atmosphere and in the atmosphere are a lot of particles and then all the red light um, gets caught up in those particles and only the blue long wave I think it's a longer wave light mm -hmm. no the shorter wave light is blue light the shorter wave can like bypass those particles <laughs> and reach us maybe I completely butchered this physics class but still remember <laughs> The objects that are more far away are more bluish and they're less intensive in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the first one we're going to do, the trees here, left and right, are going to be the most intensive in color. And before we do the trees, I would like to give a shout out to Samantha. Dear Samantha, thank you very much for your support. We appreciate it a lot. Thank you for joining us and supporting us. Uh, thank you. We yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, Samantha. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, I will start with the closest element, and this is this tree on the right side. You know, I will already use, just go in with the darker green, because it's pretty dark. It's the closest one, as I said, this is always like the darkest. I'm not going to try to be too precise mm -hmm. with this thing, so it's not supposed to be really perfect. Yeah, but there it is. And you're using some sort of circular motion. Yeah. Is this just a coincidence or...? It's, it's more or less a coincidence. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm not really adept with these markers. So then we have our nice tree in the middle. Mm -hmm. Our, of course, um, you know, crown jewel. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's quite orangey. And so I will just start by adding... It's already turned red. So I will just already start by you know, adding some orange and then later, because green is a darker color than orange, I will add green over it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it has some holes, you know, if you want to know how to draw a tree really in detail, we did a nice tutorial on that a while back um, mm -hmm. and I think you should totally check it out. Yeah. Okay, so this looks uh, promising. I mean, it's interesting how little do you need just to to start getting uh, forms that are pretty recognizable. Mm -hmm. I agree. So Maria says that uh, you explained the physics of light pretty well. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> yeah, and Tina also said on the point when where you were explaining about how the detail disappears and the the color becomes more bluish um, she said that it's like diving colors start to disappear with depth mm, yeah right mm. true not that we're divers we're not we've done some snorkeling but that's it <laughs> okay okay so yeah um, this there you go some okay let's I've already served you some physics so let you know I can I might as well dive into botany <laughs> so a tree <laughs> A tree, when it starts to turn red, right, uh, or orange or whatever <coughs> color in the autumn it does, it does that from top to bottom. So the top of the tree usually is redder first mm -hmm. than the bottom, so this is nice. 
nice little trick to remember. Um, okay, so I now I did like this one, and now I still have to do this side um, of the the forest. Basically, it's a forest edge. So, and now this is an interesting thing. So you see the forest edge. The forest edge usually you won't. We think always think, ah, oh, we see the tree trunks of the forest edge. No, we actually don't, because the trees on the edge of the forest they grow. This is also some botany. Botany part number two. Mm -hmm. They grow branches all the way yeah. to the to the ground to protect themselves from the UV light. Yeah, and uh, you can see that when when there, for example, there are some forests, and then uh, when they start cutting the trees, not in between, you can just try to to pick the selectively pick the trees and then cut them, or you can just progress from the beginning, from the forest edge to and deeper to the forest. And you can always see how how the trees get burned mm -hmm. from the from the sun. And because they don't have they never developed the the protection against UV light. So this is also one fun fact. Maybe you can observe that. And also not just that, I think it's also like when you're in the forest, the trees also fight for the light. And one way is just to use it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Low learning physics and biology here alongside drawing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, said Maria. Okay. Okay. So we got our, this is like working now on, let's say, this was like the first layer is this tree on the right. I'm also going to add some more textures and details to the first layer because uh -huh. this is how you d differentiate it from the second layer. I'm still not adding any shadows. I'm just adding some more textures and details. You know, we can see the grass blades still in the foreground. And this is what usually differentiates the first layer from the other ones that we, you can really see the details. Um, you know, I will also use some reddish because some of the grass is already like... Just throw it away. It, it didn't want to be used. <laughs> some of the grass. A shy is, color. A shy marker. Yeah, some of the grass has already kind of been burned from the summer. Yeah. So I, I picked this autumn scene because um, I didn't want to just do everything green because, you know, then you could say, yeah, what about, what about an autumn? Well, you should pick a winter scene as well, you know? <laughs> right. We're usually always drawing like or summer or... Or, you know, spring or something. Yeah. Uh, but winter, hey. <laughs> okay, so now let's do the background. And now I'll do a small trick, okay. which can, which is doable with markers. I'm not sure if, how doable it is with the rest. Um, in order to get the colors in the background a bit bluer, so the back layer are those trees behind on the top mm -hmm. of the hill, I will start, I will just do the sky first. So I'll have some blue... Um, I'll have some blue background, mm -hmm. and then every color I will apply over the blue is going to have a bluish hue. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Is, it's going to be our background. I love this trick. Yeah, I like it too. So there's a lot of thinking going on behind this drawing process, right? I mean, it's yeah. not... Of course, you can always, like, draw uh, spontaneously, but uh, what we explain here very often is just the, the thinking behind behind all this creative process. Mm -hmm. So, and I love it what you just said, the merging of the colors and the tones and, yeah. wow, so amazing. Let's add, let's add some trees here. You still see there are like two trees there. Oh, maybe it's a bit, it was a bit lighter, you know, so they're like more light in the background. They could also have some more gray added mm -hmm. to them. A gray is also, you know, the, the further away the grayer the things are, so um, because the, the color gets uh, less intensive, so you can always add some mm -hmm. gray in the backdrops. All right, there we go. So now we can see we can kind of differentiate. This is the depth. Look at this. First layer really nicely visible, more details. Middle layer with this tree, with this you know um, like line of trees there, and the back layer with that yellowish. Um, grass and some trees in the background. Mm -hmm. And this is how we create depth in an image, right? So now, let's move on to light.
-hmm. And we're going to use light. We're going to use the same thing to talk about light. So um, as you probably see, there are some nice shadows here on this image. And I think this is the reason that photographer took this photo, because this shadows in the foreground from the trees, they really um, kind of subdivide the first layer mm -hmm. and really make it more lively. So I'm going to go back to my... Um, let me see if... You, you always have to try. No, this gray is not... I'm, I'm going to have to use... Should I provide another gray tone? I think we don't have a different one. I think we'll go, I'll go with the chocolate, dark chocolate brown. Everybody. Yeah, it is quite dark, but it's fine. Look at that. Look at it. Now, this image is already nice, but we're going to add this depth to it with light. Mm -hmm. So, the tree on the right side. Always observe what you see. Don't draw what you think you see. Right? Because your mind will trick you. Draw what you actually see. So you see that this tree has a lot of like dark spots. My markers are going to, I will use my blender a bit to soften those edges. Um, if you have watercolors, this will be much light, easier or colored pencils because you can just just go over it with yeah. your with water. with your water and stuff. Mm -hmm. But look at that. I can still get a pretty nice like, okay. So this is the shade of the tree. Now let's move to the shadow. Mm -hmm. And because this grass is actually like grass blades, I will also draw the shadow in the texture of the grass. This right. is a good trick to get it realistically. So it's not going to be like a flat thing, but it's going to actually have this mm -hmm. grass blade texture. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh, wow. And what's very interesting for me as well, that um, we tend to always when drawing shade, uh, we, we think we need to just grab that black color and just start applying it all over and many times that's a mistake mm -hmm. because uh because it's not it's not actually black right i mean yeah. you using this chocolate brown color um is really it's really making this this uh drawing very harmonious so it binds everything together. Yeah. If we would take black color, it would just really, with those lines on that surface, yeah. we would just cut everything in yeah, between. It would be very aggressive. Look at that. I will use black now, just for the sake of the, for educational purposes. Oh, no. Look at that. I will just use it in one corner. Look at the depth of this black here. Yeah. It is a completely different black. It's really... So, it's so dark. It's so dark. It's so dark. It's like, you know, Darth Vader would be proud black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we did the shadows. Um, I think we did all the shadows basically that are visible here. Now let's do some shading. So the shading would also, I would just use the same chocolate delicious brown to do some shading on the trees itself. So maybe if you're wondering, you know, shadow is always the cast shadow. This is what an object casts on the surface. This is what the volume casts on the surface underneath or on another volume. And shade is the thing uh, it's the darker part of the object itself. You know, I said this forest edge, it doesn't have, the, the tree trunks are not visible, but the bottom of the forest edge is always, it's always uh, in a shade. It's always dark. There we go. So you always have like a dark line running from that forest edge. And then the back, I, I'm really cautious when then shading in the back trees, I would maybe just use some gray or maybe just a little bit of this dark because the shadows in the back are also getting much lighter and so I can just add some mm -hmm. little bit of this shading in order not to make it too dark and I will blend it away try at least try to let's see if this works yeah maybe wow maybe all right there you go Amazing. Yeah? Yeah, I okay. love it. I really like it a lot. Maybe just that tone of blue is not the, the right one. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like too, mm -hmm. uh, too azuri in the sense of beach and, you know, just like... Can you give me like another blue? Maybe I can add some more blue up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Let's try this. Yeah. And meanwhile, all of you bring this sketch to an end because we're going to move to the next one and to our last two learning points for today. And if you have any questions, drop us a comment. 
Okay, so I think I have here two, but maybe we can just try to break break that uh, strong yellowy uh, blue with with something that's a bit more cold. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, yeah. Oh, I have to be I have to be careful with that. Oof, oof, oof. oof. Ooh, this is strong, everyone. Maybe that was a mistake. But there are no there are no mistakes. Just. Happy little mistakes. <laughs> happy little lines. There are no yeah. mistakes, people. Just happy little mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, true. We have so many things that we say here on the yeah. videos. We're yeah. like, after the videos, then like, you know, we should make this a t-shirt. Yeah. I think that would be a collection till now. Imagine that in different uh, colors as well. Oof. Okay. So, um, we have here a comment, Louis said, fantastic, Maria is laughing, Carlos as well, um, so I think we are also making you laugh, and that's also a part we like to do on this channel, because, you know, this should be fun. <laughs> I mean, it's a, side, it's a side effect of us struggling here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Oh, right, everybody. So okay. this turned out way better than I expected. Yeah. So nice. <laughs> yeah, very good. And how are you doing? Are you already done? Or, yeah, let us know if you're too fast because the train is leaving in about a minute or two. So, Gaspar, what did we learn in this part? Well, in this part, let's recap. We learned about the layers. So we learned about we have the first layer, which has most details and most intensive colors, deepest shadows. Have the second layer, which has less details usually, but we can still recognize a lot of shadows and shades, and it's also still the color is quite intensive. Um, intense, not intensive, intense. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's stronger. And then we have the backdrop, where the colors um, fade into the grays and blues, and um, are in generally more restrained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. I would like to do a shout out to Tina and Luis. All right. Dear ladies, thank you for your support. You are just amazing. Thank you for supporting our channel, being active in our Facebook group and just, yeah, sticking around. That means a lot to us. Yeah, really. And to all of you, the rest of you also, we really, really appreciate um, all your support, all your comments, all the feedback we get. It's really, I think it's the thing that keep, keeps us going and doing this because we see it gets um, accepted. And um, you can also really support us by liking the video, um, by sharing it with friends and, you know, leaving a comment. It all ha helps um, make it more visible to more people. Mm. Mm. True. Yeah. Okay, so are you up for one more or yes. is there a point where you say, you know, I'm so exhausted, I spoke for the whole hour and no more, Sonia, please don't torture me. One more. The last okay. one. <laughs> okay, so. All right. Good. Okay, so let's move to the last point, let's learning to point the today. Last point. And the last point is going to be... Um, composition. Composition. Yes. So composition is something that uh, basically is one of the most important things in building an image. Um, it's like, I, I have to be honest, like, I think if the technique is bad and the colors are a bit off, the composition, if the composition is on spot, then, then you can get away with it. Mm -hmm. But also, okay, I take it back. I think colors are also important. Like, if the colors are off, it's just, like, really, uh. um, So do use, like, restrained analogous color schemes for landscapes. But, um, yeah, composition definitely helps. Yeah. And there is a big challenge with composition and landscapes. Mm -hmm. The problem is that in landscapes, you usually lack a focal point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... You know, in landscape photography, photographers, this is really impressive. They really have to look for a drama. They really have to look for this one tree coming out of the fog or this, you know, lone kind of um, rock sticking out of the ground or just, you know, 
something something that catches your eye and they usually always then also come back to some people figure, figures that are visible or some animals or something like that so um composition is important um because you have to find in a landscape view that focal point right you have to have an element of interest and this will always help you get a more interesting image because if everything is just monotonous yeah. and everything is the same then it's going to be really boring even if you beautifully color it out if you do it it's going to be that painting that everyone passes by you know sometimes someone will look at it and will go like what you painted this wow amazing but that's going to be it <laughs> so you need a focal point you need some point of interest some story to tell so wow that was also a great story i think you can learn through this story quite a lot yeah yeah okay so uh maria said you should totally do merge i would love it <laughs> okay louis said watercolors to bleed so We'll do it again. Mm -hmm. They are just giving us feedback to all everything just that mm -hmm. just happened. And we also got a question. Do we have a job apart uh, of YouTube? Mm -hmm. Well, what would you say? <laughs> well, of course we have a job apart from YouTube. YouTube takes like three quarters of our time. And then the last quarter is, uh, is well, my time. But Kaspers as well. Right, you you also put a lot of effort mm -hmm. um, inside, but uh, I do a lot of illustrations, and I'm also a teacher. Um, we do workshops with students mainly, mm -hmm. a lot of students, and for um, offices, landscape architecture offices. Mm -hmm. We teach them how to draw, how to use all this knowledge, especially like this yeah. for landscapes for them. Um, I also work parallel in a landscape architecture office. I do there basically have the role of a kind of a creative director and um, this is also the foundation of our drawing knowledge is where we learned it you know for landscape architecture purposes yeah but obviously um, develop it beyond that recently so we're still not living off YouTube or something it's not like a source of income for us so it's hard to consider it a job right now, but I think we're also going in that direction. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Since it's so much more fun, you know, when something is so fun and m makes you so happy, then you just tend to just give energy or focus mm -hmm. your energy in that direction. Yeah. So, yeah, we're so, looking forward. So <laughs> all our free time is composed out of this. And it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so, but back to the topic. Back to the topic. Back we to the topic. Have we have composition. To let's go. Let's blend in the last one. Let okay, me explain okay. you about so com let's go. composition. Composition. And right. the third one is this one. All right. Wow, wow. Beautiful. Okay. I'm just going to blend this out for sure. Okay. Awesome. Now, why did I choose this one? Because this image has not much going on. Right. <laughs> It actually just has some trees, has some trees, but the photographer really, you know, still managed to capture, uh, you know, still managed to make it interesting, because the trees they have a rhythm. They go from the big one to the smaller, smaller one. The biggest one is like on a third. Yeah, you know, they did a good job, but right, we are lacking some things that will make it interesting for painting. Because in photography, you have the, all this light and everything interesting, but when you're painting it. A lot of this stuff gets abstracted down to more basic shapes and colors and forms, so it will be harder. So let's look at how we're going to maybe add something or how we're going to get away with drawing um, this one. Mm -hmm. So first, just a quick composition 101. Maybe just to understand that image, if you remember, we had an image, we had a video about composition, you should totally check it out. Um, there is a composition principle here used in this one, and this is the rule of thirds. If you divide your image in vertical and horizontal thirds, right, um, it will be very harmonious and interesting if you put your horizon line on the either top or bottom third and your focal element on one of the four intersections. So in this case, this tree, the biggest tree, is on, exactly on one of the intersections. So this is kind of a summary of that image we're just gonna we're about to draw okay so what is lacking though in this one is a um, is I would say some depth so we are lacking an element 
in the foreground. And this is going to be, you know, to be really honest, lots of times when you're drawing or painting, you have to also invent something that is not there. So photographers who don't have that luxury, I mean, they do other tricks, they like position a model somewhere to make it look perfect or let, you know, their trained dog run just in a perfect moment. Um, but we here are going to take, we're going to also add something in the first layer to make it more interesting. Mm -hmm. But oh, we're wow. going to leave the rest. So this is, yeah, this is one important thing you have to remember when drawing landscapes or vegetation. Sometimes you have to invent things that are not necessarily there that do fit, you know, into the whole um, narrative. But um, sometimes you have to add stuff. Sometimes you have to omit things that are there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not pe many people will tell you that, but this is the way it is. You sometimes make stuff up. And if you're, you know, some, yeah. a concept designer doing an environment for something, you make up any, everything anyway. So, yeah. Um, sure. yeah, go for that. Okay, so composition. So this was the first one-on-one -on -one principle. Let me just tell you another one mm -hmm. before I start. So the first one is, like, use the rule of thirds. The second one would be balance your image out. Um, so this means if you have, like, visual weight, if you have something on one upper corner, let's say, then you have to counterweight it with the other lower um, quadrant, right? So these four quadrants, you have to always look that they're kind of evened out. So let's say if you have something here, then you put something there, and you have something here, you put something there. So it's like balanced out. Mm -hmm. Okay. But let's apply all the knowledge we have. And we will start with the first surface in the foreground. So surface and volumes, everyone as I said today many times. Okay, so I also posted the video on composition that we did a while ago uh, in our chat and we're gonna also post it in the comments for everyone who's lating this live stream later on. Okay, let me use this one. I'll just use a pencil to show you. Mm -hmm. If I divide this thing into vertical and horizontal thirds, then we'll put our horizon on the bottom third and we'll put our focal point so this is this big tree around here around the intersection mm -hmm. of of the um, of the third lines yeah okay so now I'm doing the grass in the foreground so you see I'm actually already painting in the way that this texture that this grass is um, growing this will help me you know in a way that I won't have to add the texture later but Already the surface in itself has this texture. You know, mm -hmm. at first I'm I'm gonna draw this first area. So this is the first um the first layer, like I said in the previous one, the first layer is all the way up to those trees. Then mm -hmm. the trees are the middle layer, and then we're gonna have something in the backdrop. Mm -hmm. hmm? Okay. Well, I think that's pretty smart just to start applying color in the direction of the of the yeah, just plants or these grasses that's already there so um i mean it's would you would you always use this or is it just depending on this technique i i usually use that i would admit i think the the stroke is a great tool to um to speed up mm -hmm. your painting process because you don't have to do it twice you don't have to go back and apply texture you can already do it in the stroke Mm -hmm. of the coloring itself. I, I try to do it with all medium. Wow, and I see that you're you're doing it smaller and smaller, right? Yeah. Oh, this is a good point. Yeah, so, of course, up front they're bigger and then they're getting smaller. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not so... I mean, for us, that's something that you notice, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe for someone that's also nice to mention. Yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go to the second layer where the where I would say the, the grass blades are not visible anymore, so I'm, I can afford to... Um, I'm still starting with the surfaces, right? Mm -hmm. So no, no um, volumes yet. So this is the second one. And then we have, um, yeah, maybe in the, all the way in the background, there is one interesting thing here. So we see like on the left side, you see like there's like a mountain thing. Um, mm -hmm. This mountain is almost like a surface, I would say. It has like a bluish hue to it of course because it's so far away mm -hmm. and um, I will add it to the arsenal of the surfaces because um, 
mountains in the background, so if they're really all the way back, they actually kind of behave as surfaces, just, just surfaces that are vertical. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, because they, they practically don't have any textures anymore. They, yeah. they are just flat with color. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I think we have the surfaces down. Okay. More or less. I mean, we could like subdivide it a bit. Let's see. Yeah, I can use some darker to emphasize some of those grasses up front. Um, you can see, you just look at the image, observe it carefully, and you will see where the, where the, um, where the lines, yes. or where the textures are yeah. focused. Yeah. And that's something you can do when you squint your eyes. So squint with your eyes and then just, just try to focus on the darker parts of this meadow here. And you're going to notice that there are some lines that you can emphasize, and that's something that Kasper is trying to emphasize right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. The squinting squinting trick. We use it all the time. Yeah, it's so practical. It is. Yeah. Sometimes also helps if you do a photo, right? If you're there, for example, you're looking at a beautiful landscape, and you would like to draw it, sometimes it helps making a photo, um, and then just looking at it, and then you see, because the fo photography... Especially if you're owning a smartphone phone, or if you're a really skilled photographer, you you can adjust the settings or they are, well, yeah, adjusted automatically based on the scene and the environment. And then you can also just see the contrast a bit better and the some parts are a bit sharper. And that also helps. Mm -hmm. Totally. Wow. So you, you're using two colors um, because with one... Why why are you using two colors? I thought that the, the first one I applied was not dark enough. Uh -huh, okay. Then I went in with the second one mm -hmm. to differentiate a bit more. Okay. okay. But I think it's giving it also a bit more uh, a bit more depth. It depth, is. It know? is. It's You're just... right. It is helping. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. So let's move to those volumes. Mm -hmm. So in terms of volumes, what do we have here? We have some very, very nice trees. I have no idea um, what kind of trees <laughs> those are, but I'm sure, you know what? I think this is from South America. I, I think this is either, I don't know, is it Argentina? I think it is Argentina, because I forgot where I, um, the name of the national park, but I think it's Argentina. Is it a national park? A photo from a national park? I think it is. Uh -huh. okay. Anyway, so um, I definitely don't know the trees, um, but still, it will not stop me from drawing them. Well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they have like an orange, nice orange hue. Mm -hmm. Let's use that one. So like I said, in this intersection, we will place our most dominant tree. Mm -hmm. And this one has like a very... Um, the leaves are as it's very transparent, translucent, very I don't know how you call it. It's like it's translucent a bit. So I will also already use a texture that is allowing the background colors to sit through. Okay. Then we have another one. You know what makes this interesting is this like this I think um, the fact that they're going from a big one to a small one. Mm -hmm. I think this is where this view was picked because this is a nice composition um, principle. I also like that you're the way you're using uh, the marker. You you started using the the thinner part mm -hmm. or side. True. Um, and if you're using watercolors, that's the also like it says something. Um, you can also use that a bit more details or just the the tip of the brush, and if you're using colored pencil pencils, um, you can sharpen them right now and starting uh, coloring those details. I like how you know you really know a lot about watercolor and colored pencils, so you can like <laughs> parallel to me doing it with markers. So you can tell them about how to how to do it in this other medium. Well, yeah, a bit. A bit. It's a bit different. I think this one would be a bit different because uh, uh, with color pencils you would try to 
to layer everything a bit differently here mm -hmm. because of the paper, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. I'm really trying out different markers because I'm like not satisfied with the with the color. Yeah, I don't even I don't know how exactly what which one what is. you know it's like it's new it's new for me so. But I would probably just use the same the same tone. Yeah. It depends what would you like to achieve, but probably I would use just the same tone tone of orange that you use for for the bigger trees, mm -hmm. so that uh, so that. At least everything would be more uniform. uniform. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's try that. And then so something like that. Yeah. You can say you know there are different color trees, but sometimes you just you 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 do it like you want it. You know. <laughs> this is the beauty of drawing. People <laughs> do it like you want it. It's not photography. You can do whatever you want. No, usually no one will know. Yeah. Never. No one. Is, is, you know, the one point where you cannot really do yeah. whatever you want is like portraits because everyone will know yeah. if it's off. Because it, it depends. If it's nature, then you then you you're gonna be fine. But if those are objects that demand very a lot of focus on symmetry, symmetry, then you really need to be precise. Then yes. there's no improvisation. No usually. improvisation. Or of course there is if you if you're really abstract abstract like if you're doing like special specialized illustration um, which indicates your personal style then that's something different as well. All right. Okay. So these are the first volumes here, right? Now we have another volume that I would still consider a volume, and mm -hmm. this is like a mountain range or like some hills that are not so far off, and we can still see them. You see those trees behind the those hills behind the trees. Mm -hmm. I will still like consider them volumes. So I will, they're also in the in the shadow right now. Wow! But I will add them, you know, in my uh, in, in the same at the same time in doing volumes because topography of the landscape that is not too far away is still perceived as volumes. You know, any small hills or everything that is not too far, you will perceive. As a volume, mm -hmm. you know, only when there is so when they're so far away the, the hills, you will actually kind of perceive it as a flat vertical surface. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the um, I'm really looking forward to using this dark chocolate ah, brown. I think that's black. Oh, did I use the noir? No, 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 it's no fine. this one is noir. Oh, yeah. this is the chocolate brown. Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid of the noir. 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 The noir. <laughs> I'm a friend of the Neuer. <laughs> oh yeah, that's amazing how how you can mispronounce uh, yeah. different names, especially if they are foreigner yeah. foreign names. Oh yeah, we're good at mispronouncing names. We're amazing. We're amazing at mispronouncing names. We're experts. Actually, we're quite good. We practice a lot every live stream. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. So now, as I said, composition. So we've got this composition. Now, what is lacking here is, I would say, a counterpoint to this tree, which is here on the lower side somewhere here. And this is where, you know, our imagination will come in. Uh -huh. And, you know, normally I would maybe draw an antelope or a vicious bunny <laughs> looking out of the grass. But since we're drawing, sketching vegetation and stuff, let's go for, let's go for a shrub, eh? Yeah, yeah, okay. let's do it. Let's go for a shrub. So you're probably gonna use for the same yeah. color yeah, use, of orange? I use for change. I will do it a bit differently. I want to kind of um, make it different because it is so near. It is a part of the first, um, of the first plan, of the first layer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to intensify the colors, so I will bring in a bit of green. Ooh. You know, green is going to be in Very strong bold. contrast to this, to the rest of the, to the rest of the image because green is uh, very scarce in this dry landscape. So I will be bold. I will use just a little bit of green mm -hmm. to get our attention towards that mm -hmm. shrub right here. There you go. So it's going to be the only green thing that we're going to do, but we're still going to give it a nice, um, nice twisted 
kind of I have a feeling that the plants here are like I'm just making this up now. No idea if a shrub like this is okay. For sure. You know, nature is crazy. It's very creative and never repeating itself yeah. in a way. So every tree is unique. I'm sure your kind of shrub also exists somewhere. Definitely. And I'm doing it like a half-dry shrub, you know, like mm -hmm. a really old, ah. but really resilient. Uh -huh. You know, this has some young um, leaves and branches, but you also yeah. have some old, dry ones. And yeah. um, this is actually what will give it... Uh, some character. Wow, ah, this is really dramatic. That's amazing. Good. So the only thing missing now, you know, is um, we did the composition. Mm -hmm. I even think this one is so strong that I have to add some value to this tree here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the shrub became super dominant. Yeah. More than I intended. So I have to actually make this tree bigger. This happens sometimes as well. You have to, you know, you do something... And you have to make the tree on the other side bigger. It's like cooking pudding, you know, you're like cooking, the, you have milk and then you add starch or the pudding mixture and then it's way to dance and you add some milk again and then it's way to run it and you add some more starch and then it's way to dance and then you're doing it and you'll have a full pot and pudding for five days. It looks like, it, it sounds like you have experience. <laughs> it could I mean, huh? well, amazing. It looks, I think it looks um, very, very nice. Will you add also some green to it, or is that something that you would not? Add to the whole thing? To, to, to that uh, tree that you just mm -hmm. emphasized. No, I would just leave it at the, at the shrub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. let's overdo it. Okay, so um, this was a bit of color theory applied here, by the way. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you see, most of this image is like in this reds and oranges, and we made it jump to green. Put it a bit lower. Yeah, we're going to jump to green. And it's the only thing it's going to pop out. It's going to stand out. Now what is missing here for the whole image to look nice is, of course, look at that. On the other side of those, of the analogous um, scheme is the blues. And, of course, we're going to add the blue sky. And this is going to really, really pop then. It's going to make it look amazing. So I used to really underestimate the importance of the sky. Um, mm -hmm. Until Sonia came along and um, did all her um, cloud tutorials, and then I really noticed how important it can be for um, not for sketching nature and um, landscapes because for sketching you're just relying on lines, but when you're painting them in any way, um, it's quite important. Mm -hmm. But I'm still I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna focus on the clouds because Sonia I think I'll totally butcher them. Well. You can try, but if you're not comfortable doing it, then maybe that's better not to try. Yeah, not to try uh, to stretch because it. Because you don't know what's going to happen. I mean... I have no idea what's going to happen, yeah. Since probably someone will repeat after you. Let's just ignore those clouds, okay? Yeah. Let's be rational, people. It was a nice, clear sky. Yeah? It was a nice, clear, nice, clear sky in, the, in Argentina. And Blanche is saying, whoa, looks crazy. Uh, so Thank nice you, to stop by, Blanche. We're glad you're here with us. So there you go. There, there, now my lack of um, marker skills is being visible because I think you should really be doing like... No, I think there's another thing, which is we don't own all the shades of blue that you need. So that's your main problem right now. Probably. Or challenge. Let's let's just say it's a challenge. Let's not call things problems. Let's yeah. just call them challenges. Nice little challenges. <laughs> and some happy little mistakes. <laughs> you know, in your life, you, just, you didn't do any mistakes. You just happy little mistakes. <laughs> okay. That's an achievement. So, so here, Isidore said, someone said pudding? Where? <laughs> And then Anne commented, you're too late, Isidore. We ate it all. <laughs> but you know what? Today I really cooked pudding. So, so they really cooked pudding today. Yeah. That's why I came up with this analogy. Yeah, so I know we're going to have it afterwards. Oh, we're so eating it's pudding. Because we really deserved it. I mean, hands up for Gasper, right? Do a clap. Because, I mean, you're doing a great effort. Thank you for your energy and motivation to explain everything to us. 
um, because this is really, really amazing. We learned a lot. Wouldn't you agree? Um, you gave us so much information and I really appreciate it. Thank you. I really, uh, I did my best um, and I hope I brought across some color principles um, for drawing vegetation because, you know, there's so much that one can talk about when drawing vegetation, landscapes and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, many people want to use color and this is also a very common question that we got like, yeah, how do we use color? And could you use, could you do a coloring tutorial on environments, on landscapes? And um, I know that you have this, when you see a beautiful landscape, you have this urge to do it in color. Um, but I would, to be honest, really... Um, um, suggest that you start by using just black and white to start doing your landscape stuff with just black and white and then transition to color once you're really really comfortable already with your shapes and because color is tricky and yeah. black and white stuff is much easier the thing is that color can be also very overwhelming yes. and you tend to overdo it because when it's it's really a practice that's why we always say keep on drawing because it is everything in practice so be patient yeah. and just start small with you know don't set too big of a challenge for yourself when starting with one view i mean it's nice to have goals for a amount in life of, in general in in life <laughs> in in a year in a certain period of time but you know when just starting out or um Every time learning a new skill, you go in with no expectations usually, um, and then you see how the process evolves. And this is also a nice way to proceed. Even though you probably have the tools, you bought them, right? You have a set of watercolors and you think, oh, you know, I'm going to just go out there and do my best work. Yeah, probably not. It's probably not going to happen. No. But it is totally fine. And um, one analogy I like to always also tell our students is uh, drawing is like a musical instrument. You know, you don't do it for a week and you can already, you know, notice that you will know. The people who ever played a musical instrument will know. If you haven't played it for a year, you're basically out. Your hands are, you know, you have still the theory in your head. You can read the notes, but your hands are just not obeying. So. Yeah, it's like they are, they... They fall asleep. asleep. Yeah. They are not st stretched out. They are not warm enough. Yeah. There's not enough power and energy inside. Yeah. True. Wow, Gashper. I mean, amazing. Right. So at the end, you also added some shade mm -hmm. and shadow. Mm -hmm. um, and that brought everything together. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Especially because you started out with that dark sky and uh, you somehow managed to do a very nice transition from one color to another. Yeah, I agree. It's really like somehow Well, it's yeah, amazing. It was, that was the main challenge, and I think you, you nailed it. Thank you. You nailed it with your amount of experience. Uh, high five, really. Thank you. So, yeah. Sky um, Master. <laughs> Sky Master, <laughs> but... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, the airbender. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I like it. And we also got a few comments. Cheers for Gashberg and Sonia. Pam said, yes, this is an incredible class. We are so blessed to have you instruct and share your experience. Thank you, Pam. And then Louis said, you are so helpful to share your knowledge. I enjoyed it. And then Lina, sorry, I, try, I tend to skip names, but sorry. Uh, Lina said, I enjoyed it and I learned a lot from you. Samantha said, we learned so much. Uh, so, yeah, I think this was an amazing class today. Thanks a lot, everyone. I really, really appreciate it. I'm really glad that you liked it. Um, it's been fun for me as well. Um, we always push ourselves in order to teach you. So it's been st stuff that we maybe haven't done before. And... It's definitely um, been also a journey for me. Mm. So let's recap real quick what we learned today. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't forget. So think about volumes and surfaces when drawing landscapes. Think about color. You know, use the uh, adequate color harmony. You know, adjacent mm -hmm. colors, analogous color schemes. Um, 
think about that. Think about those three layers. Front, middle, back layer. And how you can mm -hmm. differentiate them with color, right? But also with details. Yeah. Think about light, how it falls, how it creates shades and shadows. And, you know, those, the volumes are the ones that really have them. And in the end, also think about composition. This will really, really improve um, improve your drawings. And like I did here with a bit of color, you can also kind of bring an element uh, to the foreground by adding a color that is only there yeah. in the composition. So, yeah, there you have five steps. Yeah. You can try it out. You can also try to leave one step away and just, you know, look at it on the next day, on the following day, and you're going to see that something is missing there. And afterwards, you're going to add that additional step. Usually, we forget to, uh, to consider the light, so the shadow and the shade. And this is one of the crucial parts uh, that really makes the difference at the end. So, not when starting. When mm -hmm. starting, composition is the key. Yes. But at the end, uh, yeah, the... Light is one of the most important things. Yeah, so maybe we can also show you what's following for the next days. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So for the next days, on Friday, we on Friday. have again the Feedback Friday. Feedback Friday, one of our favorite and most awesome series. You send us our work and we have fun uh, giving it comments and trying to correct it. Yeah, Gasper is trying to draw it and I'm having fun torturing him <laughs> under time pressure. Yeah. And then on Monday, um, we're gonna have a guest here on our channel. Her name is Whitney Sherman. And um, she is one amazing illustrator and also art teacher. And we're going to talk with her and she's going to do with us a exer an exercise on creativity. Yeah, you can also, maybe we show them real quick, just a glimpse of it. So she has she wrote this amazing book, Playing with Sketches, and it's really inspirational. It has a lot of interesting sketching ideas and creativity exercises with drawing. And we're going to do with her one or two uh, on Monday. So be sure to share it around. I think this is going to be amazing. It's the first of our guests but definitely not the last one. I think we're going to have many um, in the future. And you can also suggest if you know any interesting guests or, you know, heard about them that could be potential um, guests for our show. Yeah. So, yeah, do tell us. We're going to try to bring even more knowledge in for you. Yes. But also for us. <laughs> oh, of course. I think there's also a huge... Uh, pleasure that we have just yeah. talking about those totally, this kind of stuff totally. and I hope that's that's being shown. Yeah. Um, so we have here a few claps, additional claps for Gasper. Um, and uh, yeah, Maria says, can wait, Carlos also says. Very cool. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today, that you learned a lot and that you could keep up with Gasper. I'm glad you did it. Um, I would also say if you like this live stream please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel join our Facebook group and be a part of our crazy beautiful creative community um, you can share your work and get your feedback uh, from us and from that community there on uh, again Facebook uh, group is named linescapers and you can also send us your work via instagram yeah tag us and stuff there yeah. the links to those are in the description below yeah so uh you know what to do keep on drawing and see you on friday bye bye everybody bye bye mm -hmm.